Hello and welcome to chapter 4, part 4. In the first three parts we set up our shooter to shoot arrows on a timer. In this part we're taking a look at how we can set, the sh set it up so it shoots the arrows when it senses the player is in front of it. For this we need to change the way it's handling its firing. So let's go into our shooter blueprint and have a look at what we've currently got. So currently at begin play we set up a timer on a loop. So every two seconds it shoots an arrow. We're going to change this so we're going to disconnect the begin play. Instead we're going to use a tick. A tick event happens all the time. So it can be quite dangerous if you put in very costly uh, code onto it. However, we need to always check whether the player is in front of the actual target. If they aren't, that's fine, but we will always want to be checking if they are. So on the tick event, we're going to use a sphere trace. So drag this out and do sphere trace. And you want sphere trace by channel. And a sphere trace is basically an inv invisible line that comes out from a starting position towards an end position and it's checking for collisions along that path. In a sphere trace, it has a, a sphere-like shape, so rather than a, an, a small a thin line, it's an actual sphere long capsule. So along this, we need to set up a start, an end and the radius. The start position is quite simple, it's just the arrow source. So drag your arrow source out and get the reference for it. And then from here, we're going to get the world location of that source. And that goes straight into the start. The end point, though, is a little bit more involved, as we have to get the arrow source and get which way it's facing. And to do that, you have to first of all get the rotation. Once you've got its rotation, you can get its direction, and that is called get forward vector. This forward vector is what we call normalized. That means is that the values are between 0 and 1. So what we need to do is we need to multiply that by the length that we want to actually check for. So in return value, we're going to drag this out and multiply this by a int. And we multiply it by 3000. This will then be added onto the location because we need to offset that line so it comes out from the world location. So vector add vector, and you're adding those two together, and that's your endpoint. The radius we're going to set to 10, and we're going to change the trace channel from visibility to camera. The reason why we do that is because the character doesn't have a mesh on it, it's completely see-through. So if we're checking for a collision on the visibility spectrum, that's not going to be really useful because the character is invisible. So now we need to check through a camera rather than the visibility of it. And the camera is basically a blocking thing. So whenever something is being blocked, uh, so that's the camera channel you want to use. This is going to give us an out hit and a return value. Return value is true or false whether it hit something. Out hit though is where the juicy stuff is. And that is all the data that is collected when it hits something. So I'm going to right click on out hit and choose split. And here's all the various amount of data we have. And interestingly enough, we have the out hit hit actor. This is the actor that we've hit with our trace. So from there, we're going to check whether or not we hit the player. So do equals, and the other object will be get player character. And now go into a branch. Look that all up. And if that is true, that's when we want to call the shoot arrow event. So from true, we can type in shoot arrow. Now what's going to happen, because it's on a tick event, it's going to continuously shoot out arrows. Click compile and take a look at this. You'll see if I walk in front of it, it just keeps shooting arrows at quite a speed. Almost unfairly. So I want to maintain that two second window between arrows being shot out. So on my shooter, when we've got shoot arrow, we're going to do something called a do once. So after the event is started, call a do once node. The do once node just tells it to go through this just once. And it'll do the spawn of the arrow, and then we're going to delay it by two seconds. After two seconds, and the completed, we're going to drag from the completed round to our reset of our do once. 
If you want to make it so the line's a bit neater, you can double click on the line to add a reroute node. It simply allows you to easily see the line a bit better. Like so. So after two seconds, it will totally do once to reset and open up again, so I can then shoot the arrow back out. So if I go back to my game, it'll shoot arrow, wait two seconds, shoot another one, another two seconds, another one. If I step away from it, it'll stop shooting entirely until back in front of it. So this sets up some cool stuff because that means then we can, if I duplicate this, You can set up sort of Indiana Jones esque movements, which is quite fun. Oh, got hit. Ooh. Pretty cool. And that's how we get that working. And that's kind of it for chapter four. We've done all of that, so we've got it. So let's recap what we've done in this chapter. In the first part, we looked at just importing the meshes and setting up our blueprints with the correct materials. Once we got that underway, we then looked at getting the shooter to actually launch these arrows out from it. On the part after that, we then got the arrow to deal damage to the player and give them knockback. And finally, we managed to get the arrow to be shot based on a sensor rather than a timer. And that'll do it for this chapter. Join us in the next chapter where we start working on the user interface. So we get to show the player's uh, life, so hearts, and also the keys they've collected. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.